Hey folks, what's up? I finally watched the Halo show on Paramount Plus. I've had a sick cat the last couple of days, and I basically just binge watched this over the course of about 30 hours in between naps and, and, and caretaking. Um, couldn't watch it when it came out because I, I think this came out right when Chris and I were moving or right after we moved, and so it just it wasn't even on the radar. Because as much as I love Halo, I was just way too busy. But I'm caught up now and eagerly awaiting season two. Um, I liked this show. A lot. Like, I have nothing bad to say about this show. And I know that's going to trigger quite a few people who are going to immediately be typing in the comments right now. Oh, the writing was shit. Master Chief should have never taken his helmet off. Rah! If you've been around my channel for any length of time, long-term viewers know this. I'm a cheap date. I, I, I have a very low bar when it comes to entertainment. Also, as someone who has been making a living as a writer for close to 20 years, I kind of have a pretty good read on what's good or bad when it comes to writing, and this is not bad writing. I know that the issues some people have with it, everything I've read online stems from two things. One, he took his helmet off in the first episode, and that was like, you have these little irritated fanboys who are like, no, that's not, hashtag not my Master Chief, which makes me chuckle, chuckle in the same way that people did the hashtag not my Obi-Wan. Some people who call themselves fans get their panties in a bunch about things that makes me wonder if they really are fans of things. Um, in any case, the only realistic criticisms I've found are, are about some of the pacing elements, which I can kind of get behind and some of the, uh, CGI, which was very well done throughout most of the episodes. I think there was a couple of moments when it was obviously CGI, and that was mostly related to these intense fight sequences where you can't have, um, you know, an actor doing that kind of stuff because the Spartans are meant to be moving faster than human and so on and so forth. And so that can't be realistically captured on film. So they used CGI. So some of those shots were a little over the top and that's fine. But overall, you know, if I had to give this a rating on a scale of one to 10, I think I would give it like an eight out of 10 overall. Um, I have nothing against this. Um, most of the complaints I saw online were either about people who said, he took his helmet off, or you have people complaining that that's not the way he was portrayed in the games, that's not the way he was portrayed in the books, etc., etc., etc. And I think this is a case of a lot of people who have lost the understanding of what an adaptation is. It's not meant to be a blow-by-blow -blow take of something that came before. I always like to point out Raymond Feist's uh, Facebook page because he has done a very good job of explaining this to people who have come into the comments of his Facebook and left crazy comments about the adaptation of the Rift War cycle that's currently going on. And he continually comes back to, you know, guys, the vision of what was written in my head is different than every single reader who has ever read my books. And that vision is different for the showrunners of any show that chooses to, you know, adapt my books. There are going to be differences in the way things are portrayed on film versus they are in a video game or in a novel form, and you have to accept that that's a reality going into an adaptation. You have to be able to switch off that part of your brain um, that says, oh my god, this isn't a blow by blow. And that's a hard thing to do. By the way, I used to be that person when I was younger. I used to very much be in that camp of, well, if it's not blow by blow, I'm not going to watch it. I was very much a purist in my uh, naive youth. As an adult, I have realized that that was a mistaken way to view things, and I have found my life hugely, if I can even say that that's way, hugely enriched by the amount of entertainment I'm able to get from things now once I've disassociated myself with that limitation of thinking that it has to be blow by blow. But Raymond Feist also talks about how, you know, he's working with the adaptation, he's helping them create original characters. For the show, and I know some people have criticized like Rings of Power because they created characters that weren't in Tolkien's books, and that's just wrong. But is it wrong when the author themselves is the one helping to do it, as is Raymond Feist or Stephen King on any of his adaptations where they've added new characters? The point I'm getting at is the Halo show on Paramount is a an adaptation. Um, it's not going to be a blow-by-blow -blow of any of the novels. It's not going to be a blow-by-blow -blow of any of the games. It's just another way to consume content around the Halo franchise and the Master Chief character. Um, once you realize that, I find this to be an extremely enjoyable show. 
Um, I'm not beholden to any one point of view. I've played all the games, never read the books, but I have played all the games two or three times each. I'm familiar with Master Chief. I'm familiar with the story. And I liked the way they portrayed things here. I thought it was a fun show. The action sequences are really good. I really enjoyed the video game sequences they did, especially because you get all these like throwbacks to the game. I mean, it started off with like the very first episode when they drop down into the drop ship and they just proceed to tear things up. Um, and and I thought it was really well done. And I know some people have said, oh, but they weren't as big as they were in the game. They're supposed to be, you know, 20 feet tall. And, you know, yeah, it's not it's not. It's the same people who complained that all Numenorians were supposed to be nine feet tall, and and the fact that Rings of Power didn't portray the Numenorians as nine feet tall, you know, is should never be. We should never watch the show. All right, slow your roll, folks. Um, I liked this. Like I said, eight out of ten for me. Um, the only place I ever noticed was some of the action sequences got a little over the top, but they were also fun. There was especially one scene. I think it was the it was either the last episode or the next to last episode. It's all kind of a blur. At some point midway through the show, they describe how a needler works, and then there's this sequence. It might, like I said, penultimate or last episode. There's a sequence where they're rolling down through, and there's a marine on the back of one of the warhawks, and he's firing the gun rate, and a needler hits him in the chest and fills him full of needles, and he goes. Uh, and then he just explodes into pink mist and it, as the as the warthog is just speeding down the road. And I was like, that's really brilliantly done, which actually is one of the things I really enjoyed about the show was they took the, the, the sort of comic book violence that the video game had where we never really saw any bloodshed, so to speak. I mean, there was some, but not, you know, it was done in a very graphic way in the show. I mean, we get sequences where we've got grunts that are like pulling themselves along the ground cut in half and their entrails are like dragging behind them um i just you know it was it was very visceral um and i liked it i also just i I liked the humanization of the character and i know that that's that's a hard line for some fans these are the people who have like been up in arms because he took his helmet off um because for them they don't want any humanization going on whatsoever with master chief he's supposed to be this stoic brick wall that no emotions and you know very short little phrases um and and no actually getting to know that character so i appreciated having a more humanized character here because it gives you something to connect with and i thought the backstory with the you know um adoption of the children i'm gonna use air quotes around adoption was very well done um i liked the 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 way they showed the covenant, um, the special effects I thought were really well done. The action sequences were good. Um, the overall attention to the elements that were visual, I felt were, were extremely well done and, and made it enjoyable for me. I thought the storyline was really good. I liked the way they had, um, the um and i'm blanking on her name in the moment here but the scientist lady who created the the program uh, halls how Hal, Hal, halsley how Hal, halsey whatever her name was anyway i liked the villainous take because you know she's never been like an innocent but they really i felt did a good job in villainizing her in the show and you know she starts off being someone you can really feel for and you want to sympathize with and then as we get deeper into the show we're like oh she's you know yeah she's a mad scientist off her rocker she needs to be gotten rid of um and just very well done and i like the way that we i like how we didn't get a halo reveal in the first episode and we did get it through the dream sequences and everything else but we don't actually set foot um physically um on a halo in the first season because they're saving that for season two um which i'm assuming it'll be towards the end of season two i don't know yo because when we leave off the last episode they haven't completely finished the star map yet um and so they have to still do that portion so i don't know if the second season is going to pick up with them already on the halo or if we're going to get some episodes of them on the run from the covenant trying to get to the halo first i don't know yet but i am engaged now and i'm along for the ride and i can't wait for season two so at the end of the day for me i like the show i thought it was great um it's not for everybody that's fine if you didn't like it don't watch it don't watch season two 
I'm going to watch season two. I really enjoyed this. I can't wait for more. I can't really think of anything that I, that I would have changed um, in this first season. I mean, honestly, it was all really, really good. The, the, the way that they're sort of leading in with the Quan character um, where she's going to be at this protector who's going to have a portal that they need to get to for season two to help them get where they got to go. I, I, it was a slow burn, but I appreciate where they went with that character and how they're setting that up because it's got me intrigued about how they're going to make this work for the next season, how they're actually going to find the halo. So for me, I liked it. Like I said, eight out of 10 for me, I found it highly enjoyable. Let me know your thoughts below right down there. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you like this video and you want more. Don't forget to support in all the ways you can. Super chats, super stickers, super thanks, the memberships, our Patreon page. There's a Discord down there as well if you want to come hang out with us there. And until next time, everybody, stay safe and happy viewing. Let me know if there's any other shows you'd like me to uh, sink my teeth into. Till next time, peace.